CBS Sports has some serious doubts about the Chicago Bears' ability to compete in the NFC North. Me and Bobby going to talk a little bit about that. Plus, we got one of the most dumbass takes when regards to Kayla Williams that I've ever seen in my life that we're going to talk about. And where did the Bears wide receiver group rank in best overall improved position groups in the NFL? We'll talk about it all and more on today's Chicago Bears Central. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. We got Bobby in the building today. Shout out to Bobby, yeah. man. man. Yeah. Uh, we we got some wild shit to talk about today, bro. I'm not even going to lie. Like, some of these articles just frustrate me sometimes. This I one know, from right? CBS Sports, though, is kind of understandable. So we got two quotes from CBS Sports. One from Brian Diardo, uh, who says this. I'm leery when it comes to putting too high of expectations on a rookie starting quarterback, which is what Caleb Williams will be this season. Add in the fact that they play in one of NFL's toughest divisions in another season is another reason why I'm hesitant to buy, to buy too much bear stock this season. Talk to me in 2025 after Williams has had a full season under his belt. Then Jordan as well with CBS Sports says this. Kayla Williams may end up being a star, but will he hit the ground running? Chicago has a head coach fresh off the hot seat of Matt Eberflus and a new offensive coordinator in Shane Waldron. Quarterback selected number one overall, haven't surpassed six wins in their first season since Andrew Luck in 2012. And the NFC North isn't exactly a cakewalk. How do you feel about those two coaches? Basically, not doubting the talent on the Chicago Bears team, but more so, I guess, how everything's coming together, as well as how competitive this NFC North is going to be this season. Bobby, how you feel? I mean, I believe that was probably one of the better articles that we've heard, you know what I'm saying, in a in while, because there's been a lot of stupidity. We even like got people saying the Bears are going all the way to the Super Bowl. It went that high. Yeah. But this one is reasonable. This one makes sense, and he's absolutely right. But I'm going to tell you this, me, I'm confident in the Chicago Bears. I know we got to temper the expectations, you know what I'm saying? But I am confident that the Bears can be in the mix. They're going to be able to compete. I understand that the NFC North is a tough division, but the Bears outside of the Packers held their own. And, to, and I know that even some people are going to say, like, look, we got to beat the Packers. We got to beat the Packers. We got to beat the Packers. It is rightfully so. Mm-hmm. It ain't, but it's not like the last two times that we played them, they just absolutely, you know what I'm saying? Well, the last time, not the first time it was bad. But within a division is the point is that the Chicago Bears are fine. They should be good and be able to compete within that. And the best part about it, we don't got to worry about a, a divisional opponent until later in the season when mm-hmm. I think the Bears can rack up some wins in the beginning of the season, they should be be fine to still be able to see some success and go over six wins for sure. Yeah, I mean, the NFC North, don't get me wrong, like you said, it, it's, it's a great division. It's a deep division. But I think, like you said, we competed well against everybody but the Packers last year. We got to win against everyone. And not to say that that automatically should assume that we're going to be able to do that. But I think when you look at the overall talent on this roster, they they – I trust that they're going to be able to compete. I'm not I'm not saying they're going to win the division or anything like that. We do have to see it first before I'd ever be willing to, to do something like that. But to completely count them out because of it, I just don't believe it. And like, and I've been one of the people as well to say, temper your expectations on Caleb Williams. Let's not come in here and necessarily say he got he to gotta live up to C.J. Stroud's rookie season or anything like that. He has to be him. He's going to go through mistakes. He's going to go through up and downs as every rookie quarterback does. But to throw out the fact that first overall picks – don't usually surpass six wins. Let's let's not act like Caleb Williams isn't coming into one of the best situations that a first overall pick has ever come into as a quarterback as well. Like it's, it's on top of having a solid defense. So I get I get understand the doubt. I just I, I guess I just don't agree with it. But at the end of the day, they got to put it as you say, Bobby, on wax by going on the football field and showing that they can that they can live up to it, man. They do, man, and that's that's what it really comes down to. But. I'm, I have some confidence. I'm not going to go overboard like I've done in years past because we got to see it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We got to see it. But I am confident that the Bears will be able to compete with these guys that's within a division because I think when you're talking about the Lions, they will be good. But now you start handing out contracts. You got to build this team a different way. Yeah. The Bears, we see, you know what I'm saying? They handed out contracts themselves, but we seeing them being more favorable, in my opinion, because now you're over there, they – we kind of going up with what the market is saying. The Bears will eventually get to that point, but I think that's kind going to kind of hold the Detroit Lions back in years to come. Yeah. Then the Packers, look, y'all can call me a hater. I don't give a damn. The man Jordan Love was good for half a season. 
I'm just saying now the NFL is going to adjust. Yeah. This is when we're going to really see if he's going to be that that good. We see we seen a, a nice stretch of it, but when the NFL adjusts and defense adjusts, can you adjust again? Because this is that's what separates the good quarterbacks from the greats. So I just got to see it again before I become a believer and believe that we just going to be skunked for another 10 years. Exactly. And with the way that things have gone for the Bears, it's it's uh, just as a little peek behind. I got to do an episode in a couple of weeks for Bleacher Report. And they asked me, I, I'm putting together the all time Bears list. And when you when I was doing that quarterback situation, I'm like, hey, bro, I may seriously have to fix <laughs> like somebody that I wasn't even alive to watch here, bro. Like, I don't even know what's going on here. Um, that's a fact. <laughs> that's like, that's just where we are with that. Man. Um, so I get it that, that, that I, I've always understood the doubt around the Chicago Bears, and uh, it's up to us as a franchise to prove it wrong. But I think you also can't deny and overlook the fact that Ryan Poles has set this franchise on a really good trajectory. Fast. Really good. And, and he's really come in and kind of reshaped it. The only thing that has eluded us so far is the wins. We haven't gotten a whole lot of wins yet. Ten wins over two years that we've been covering this team. We hope to be able to, to almost double that this year. We hope so, Thanks. right? Like, so, uh, but ultimately, like, th there's going to be doubt. And when you have uh, rookies, all, rookies, second and third years players, is all playing huge roles for you. Yes. Caleb Williams. Romo Dunze uh, on, on the offensive side of the ball. You then, on, on the flip side on that, on defense, you got Javon Dexu stepping into the first time starting as the three-tech. You got Jaquan Brisker, Kyler Gordon, Tyreek Stevenson. We got young players Probably. all up and down this yeah. that are that we're, we're relying on to be a big part. I didn't even mention Darnell Wright, right? right? So, like, <laughs> so I understand the doubt there because – over their careers, we haven't won a whole lot. Yeah, we doubled our wins from the first year to the second year, but now we got to show that not only can we can we play better, but we can be more consistent. The Bears have not been a consistent team. We have not had very many games since Matt Eberflus has taken over to where the offense and defense both look good in the same game. This is a season that we're hoping to start correcting some of that. I agree with you on that. And my last point is, I and that's a, to add on to your point, I think it's great, and if the Bears can – be that consistent defensive team that we – or the defense could be consistent like it was towards the end of the season, and Caleb Williams just simply doesn't screw up on every game. The Chicago Bears will win more than what they've won in years past because look at how many close games the Jets' defense kept them in, but because they were lacking at the quarterback position, they couldn't win those close games. They Bro, they, they were keeping teams under – 20 points on a lot yeah. of those games. Great Zach point. Wilson was screwing it up. So, Caleb, let's get it. You yeah, got a ball we'll out. See. We'll see. Well, moving on from that to a just uh, – this is how you know you're in the offseason where people are just bored. <laughs> so, Christopher Knox came up with a uh, article in which he said seven NFL stars who could retire earlier than expected. Caleb Williams was on that list. Why? Well, he hasn't even started his NFL career yet, bro. Like, Crazy. what are like what are we doing here? To the fact that we like, I get it. Yeah, there are going to be some players that retire early, but to 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 label a rookie that hasn't even taken a snap yet to then say, "Hey, guess what? Uh, he's going to probably retire early." You got to stop being bored, my boy. What do you think about it? It makes absolutely no sense. Me, look. Do you know what the salary cap is going to be by the time Caitlin Williams hit 40? <laughs> like it might be at some ridiculous number. Who knows? Yeah. But the man before he even played a down said that he's chasing Tom Brady. You think he's going to eclipse that by playing a seven-year career? <laughs> a and the, and career? the reasoning, too. Let me lay out the reasoning. He literally said because he made over $10 million in college and that he may walk away from the game due to having more than enough money. You aren't paying attention right. to anything Kayla Williams has said. He has literally talked about, like you said, chasing Tom Brady, setting that the bar is at seven titles, these type of things. He said he wants to be a, a mortal in football. And you're worried about the money? <laughs> what? <laughs> it makes no sense, bro. It, the, the stuff like that, yeah, you right. It's the off season. Everybody waiting on training camp. Ain't nobody really publishing anything. It was like, damn, let, let me just get the Bears fan riled up a little bit. <laughs> it's it's honestly just stupid, bro. And then when you when you really look at it, like if we're just being 100% honest, there's only been one star quarterback to me that's truly retired early without really getting to accomplish anything, and that's Andrew Luck. And that was only because of injuries. The man got beat up, bro. 
Bad. Bad. <laughs> Bad. Like, just to name the other players on this list, he named Joe Burrow again. That's stupid. Patrick Mahomes. Why? <laughs> when you know he's chasing Tom Brady. <laughs> Marlon Marlon Humphrey, cornerback from the Baltimore okay. Ravens. Cornerback. Saquon Barkley. I can always understand a running back because sometimes yeah. the game just doesn't love running backs. Yeah. TJ Watt, the edge out of Pittsburgh, and Justin Jefferson from the Minnesota Vikings. This Why is a, would Justin bored. Jefferson retire early? <laughs> they already he's been a number one wide receiver in the league. <laughs> Why wouldn't he continue to be the number one and then try to elevate his name? And most know. of the reason that he keeps going to is money. Listen, if you just broke and you a little jealous, <laughs> just say that, bro. Like, don't get me wrong. I wish I had $40 million, too. But come on, man. Like, <laughs> they said Caleb Williams made $10 million, and that's just more than a $40 million contract <laughs> in the NFL. $50 million right now. People are getting $50 million per year. What are we talking about? He says that he'll, uh, he'll uh, earn over $100 million by the end of his rookie contract at age 27. Like stop! Like, so I want two hundred now. I want five hundred now. I want. I, d- give me more. Uh, yeah, Do you work at your job and say, "Look, I, just, I know you paid me ninety, but this year I'm gonna take eighty five. No, <laughs> you say I want more money, <laughs> bro. I just about? like I just like some. So, listen, if y'all bored. I get it. Uh, NCAA is coming out soon. I can't wait till it comes out. Right. Hopefully, people stop being bored by then. Hard knocks to give y'all a little something too. Like. Boy over there struggling. That boy, that brother starving. That's what that is. That brother starving. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> but to get back to to f- actual football conversation, so it had ranks of each uh, most improved position group in the NFL, and the Bears ranked number two. The Bears wide receiver group specifically named uh, got named number two. We'll talk about that in a minute. I just want to go over the ones. So number one ranked the Falcons quarterback position got ranked as the number one most improved position group this offseason. Bears wide receivers at number two. You then got the Tennessee Titans O-line at number three, which I definitely agree with that. They've done a lot of work on that O-line. Uh, the New York Jets O-line at number four. The Carolina Panthers skill positions at number five, even though it's technically not a position. They cheated there. It's not one position group, but I see what uh-huh. y'all did. They did. The, the Patriots offense overall at number six. And then the Arizona Cardinals interior defense at number seven. And the Pittsburgh Steelers QBs at number eight. So how do you feel about the Bears ranking in that? I feel like the list is cool. Yeah. I think I think when you talk about the most important position on the field is the quarterback. And for the Atlanta Falcons to go get Kirk Cousins and Michael Penny Jr., that's a dub. You got you got to take that yeah. because you're taking care of the now and the future. Me, personally, I'm good right where the Bears are at. Look, they showing a lot of love to the Bears. I'm all for it. But y'all know how we gonna, how real we're going to keep it when we're talking about our Bears. They got to do it. Yeah, We don't do this shit for style points. You know what I'm saying? We we want to see we we want dubs. Yeah. And we we've we been tripped, bro. Y'all been the greatest fans ever. Seven how, how many wins? 10, Ten wins, wins in, in two, two years. And then one season we only had 3 and we lost 14 games and y'all was still rocking and rolling. That's why y'all the greatest out there and that's why y'all deserve this. We deserve dubs. And like I love it when you compare it to everything else. I just want the results now, bro. Yeah, I mean, and, and we, we've we talked heavily over this offseason to how much work they've done to improve that wide receiver group. Getting Keenan Allen was already, like, you could have done that, and we we almost doubled from what we were last year, right. but you also dra- draft Romo Dunze in that, who could could have been the one, number one wide receiver taken off the board in most drafts. We were just an extremely deep wide receiver draft in this one. Um, yeah, you're damn right they've improved one of the most improved uh, groups last year because, listen, we were betting on Equinami St. Brown to actually be a, a, a playmaker for us last year, bro. Bro, it's crazy. <laughs> they see Doug, he call him the world greatest blocker. Bro, I mean. <laughs> the world's Dub greatest Petty. blocker. <laughs> Dub Petty. But this is my thing, too. Like, if they're, and, and this is why a list like this, my analytical brain, I start breaking down too much. So you get, you talked about the Patriots offense overall. Why couldn't we get votes? Because if you don't think our offense overall has improved, oh, yeah, what are yeah, we doing yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got Caleb Williams, Romo Dunze, Keenan Allen. You got, you went out and got DeAndre Swift and you got Shane Waldron. Oh, and Gerald Everett, which we can't keep forgetting Gerald Everett and all we of can't. this either. Come on, man. That's a fact. Yeah. I yeah. think that's a very good point to make, uh, Hayes, because the Bears improved tremendously. 
You know what yeah. I'm saying? All all across the board, at least offense on the offensive side, and to even include the coach in there, that's a, you you definitely right on the money with that. That's a dub. Do you they think trip. that that the doubt around the offensive line is one of the biggest reasons why the Bears' offense still gets so much doubt that that is getting this offseason? I think so, and I think it comes in in in, in part because of us. You know what I'm saying? Not not us per se, but like the general masses for the Bears. We talk about, oh, Ryan Post is he doesn't invest in the offensive line. But right here on Chicago Bears Century, I already told y'all and broke it down. That's not true. The investment yeah. has been there. It's just that some guys is going through personal stuff, not showing up. And I think it's rightfully so. And then also when there's going to be that doubt, it's going to be the rookie quarterback that you got to show respect to that discussion. You have to. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not going to be C.J. Stroud or Andrew Luck. We know that sometimes these guys go in these tough situations, but we also have to acknowledge this is one of the greatest situations a rookie quarterback has gone through. But we know the Bears organization. These are the ruiners of quarterbacks. Yeah. So the Bears got to break the curse, as Ryan P uh, Poe said. Gotta break every, the time curse. I, every time I see Jay Cutler, bro, and how much better he looks now that he's not playing football anymore, <laughs> it reminds me of how not. much stress that boy went through here in Chicago, bro. Like He's nuts. Bro, Jay Cutler looks like a completely different person, bro. That's like crazy, ain't that, it? The last two years here in Chicago, bro, Jay Cutler looked like somebody smacked his mama, killed his dog, and shot him in the kneecap all at the same time, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. the, he, that, that, that boy looks – he looked like he can play right now, bro. That's how good Jay Cutler looks right It's now. crazy, man. Hey, but – hey, we trying to break the curse, bro. Whatever – yeah. not whatever we got to do, but most of the things that we have to do to break the curse, we on board for it. This I, I know this is a temperature check, and this is going to be something we continually go through after seeing the play, the uh, the the preseason things like that. Your feelings right now around the Bears, Bobby? How confident? What's your confidence level of the Bears making a postseason appearance this year? I'm about like at a seven. Okay, I'm at a seven. On paper, it looks beautiful, bro. Mm -hmm. it, it looks like a beautiful canvas, but y'all know I. I I, I'm like Justin Fields and they get out of the play all week, yeah, and yeah, we was yeah. right there. Yeah. But we can't go off what was right there. We got to go out what, what the end result was. And the end result was that they didn't make it. <laughs> so for this team, I love what's on paper. I love what's in front of me. I love the youth. I love the experience that came in. So I got to stay at a seven. Now, once we uh, show me against, show me what y'all, you got to come out the, the gate firing against the Tennessee Titans. Because like you just mentioned, that offensive line has improved and they went out and got some some more depth at wide receivers. So they're not coming in as a – it's not going to be a cakewalk. Yeah. If some people think it's just an automatic dub. So the Bears – look, bro, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be at a seven. But if game one, they get that dub, I'm going to be a homer, bro. I'm going to be at ten. <laughs> I'm gonna be oh, that's a fact, bro. If you if you if the if the Bears get a get a dub in week one and you ask me after week one what the Bears are gonna do, I'm absolutely gonna be like, yeah, we're making that's the playoffs. Your, they, with a, a, a beat down? Oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, gonna be a homer, bro. I, I, I haven't I haven't reached the, the place in my um in my podcasting career yet where I'm able to remove my fandom from my teams. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like not, not the excitement after a win. Like when we're having these type of conversations, of course, we're honest. We always talk, we like to break things down, always. But if you if you ask me after a dub, oh no, I'm a fan at that point. You got to give me 24 hours after a win before you ask me anything. That's it, bro. That's like, a fact. <laughs> Tell you that's a fact. But yeah, man, you know this is gonna be a big season, and it's gonna be a great season here at Chicago Bears Central. Man, C Dub's gonna be doing the live calls. We coming back. We getting back in 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 rhythm. Um, I can't wait to preseason games, man. I'm really excited about this season. I'm excited about every Bears season to start, but this one does have a bit of a different feel around it. I think most. Most Bears fans, I'm not going to say all, but most Bears fans are feeling that as well, that this this just feels different. Now, that could change in week one if we watch this and we're like, damn, Caleb Williams got sacked six times. We're right back to the same shit. But let's hope that that's not the case. That's for sure. Facts. Hey, y'all going to be able to purchase y'all training camp tickets next week, today. Next week, today. They're going to be on sale. Only So go ahead and get ready. I got to I gotta take me a visit. You going? I, I got to go. I was about to say, with you being back close to the home, you kind of got I'm you, right? Back. I, I got to go. I got to yeah. go see if I feel the aura. <laughs> well, definitely, man. Y'all make sure y'all stay in tune, support the team, man. Any last thoughts, Bobby, before we get up out of here, brother? That's it. That's it for me, y'all. But other than that, thank y'all. Appreciate y'all. Keep showing that love and support. And y'all know we're going to keep coming with it.
Absolutely. Y'all go check out the Shy Bulls podcast with the Kanye boys. My boys passed 6,000 subs. We're trying to get them to, to 6,500 subs before the season starts. You hear me? So y'all go over there. Y'all support them, man. They deliver great uh, Bulls content each and every day. Y'all make sure y'all support them. As far as over here, though, you can follow us at Shy Bears Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Chicago Bears Central, gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail number to do so, 773 773- Two four two nine three three six. We the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. Shot town up, bear down, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, 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 break.